Hey guys, what's going on? It's Dan Keeson with another Star Citizen Opinion video. And this video is a special one. This is the top three things that came out of the, the Star Citizen Gamescom announcement stream that they did. You know, out of every presentation Star Citizen has done, this has been the biggest to date. There's been so much that's packed into this one. I just narrowed it down to the top three things I was most excited about, but there's a lot of things to cover. And uh, I will start off by saying this was their best presentation yet. It went off without a hitch and uh, they did a live demo. And a lot of people say, yeah, Dan, well, it's scripted. Part of it was scripted, of course, you know, they each person had to do individual things. They had a, a few different players set up in, in their own uh, combined multiverse, but a lot of things you had a chance to see at work real time. And one of the things we're seeing right here is is uh, the new star map, which is just a little feature that uh, you know they've integrated that just has, looks amazing. But in terms of uh, what, one of the first things I want to talk about is the dynamic missions. Uh, they showed a few things it, throughout the the Gamescom presentation that showed, hey, look. You know, there's dynamic missions that are going to happen throughout the Persistent Universe. Uh, in, in particular with uh, Release 3.0, which was formerly 2.7, but now they're dubbing it as 3.0 because there's a, there's so much they're integrating into this new release. The first of which we're going to take a look at here is planet side landings and one of the things you'll notice right away as you see this the, the uh, freelancer kind of get into a uh, position there you're gonna see it's cruised by a new station here but one of the things you'll see is that there are there's no real draw distance or there's no fade in effect what you see is what you see when you get to the planet side and essentially what Chris Roberts says it's based off the horizon right so there's it's not like a no man's sky where you kind of see it get pixelated in or you know kind of fade in everything is there for you to see based on the horizon which is a nice touch you know not not to take anything away from no man's sky you know i think they've pushed the boundaries in their own limit but seeing this in play you know live is something you you know as a space sim fan and especially a star citizen fan you're not gonna forget um you know we're gonna get a chance to see here what happens you know they talked about atmospheric flight when you see a freelancer enter the atmosphere it was another one of those wow moments and throughout this entire gamescom presentation there was a lot of those wow moments and they'll be, i'll put a link to the GameStop, the gamescom twitch stream in the link below in case you guys do want to watch it and uh it was it was well worth the hour plus tech demo that was but here we're gonna get a chance to see the the actual atmospheric a portion of the landing you know there's gonna be atmospheric flight we had a chance to look at that there's an updated HUD but you know one of the things that I think is gonna be cool about the planet side landing and the seamless transition because this is about as seamless as we've ever seen in any sort of game up to this point is I think it's gonna allow for a lot of organic gameplay during the live tech demo you know the Chris Roberts told uh, the guy playing is like hey just set this thing down anywhere and you you know we proceed we'll get a chance to see it here that hey look you can land wherever you want and from a you know an or what I like to call organic gameplay standpoint you know I could see an organization kind of burrowing off in a certain section of a planet that may not be easily found or you know uh, you can there's just so much possibilities and and there was a small moment in the Gamescom presentation where Chris Roberts said hey you know you can have your own corner of a planet and a lot of people in the, in the twitch chat said oh uh, space base confirmed that's not necessarily true but I think in a maybe organic way you can do that one of the things we'll see towards the end of this video is the item 2.0 system where you can actually manipulate items and it may not seem like a big deal but it actually is in an in, in MMO you know in, in, a, in a space MMO like this having kind of like a I don't want to call it Skyrim -y type inventory system but a system where you can move things around in a persistent universe with lots of players is a it's a cool thing and it's something that we used to see back in the days of Ultima Online that you don't see typically in a lot of MMOs. So a, an exciting thing about the planet side landing you, you'll kind of see here uh, the other p exciting part about it is that there's different you know bases and, and stations that you can land into and just seeing how seamless this was you know without a hitch coming in and out of the system you know there's a lot of things that could have gone wrong during this tech demo so the other thing you know from this planet side landing standpoint is that it just opens up a lot of possibilities you know in, in 3.0 which is supposed to come out by the end of this year they said there's going to be about 30 or so planets to be able to explore 30 or, or so locations to be able to land and explore and that's no small feat i think one of the overarching themes that a lot of people who watch this this presentation was that star citizen and cig has held a lot under wraps 
You know, I think a lot of people weren't really sure what to expect from this presentation. And there was just so much revealed. You know, one of the things I'm going to do throughout the next week is dedicate some specific opinion based videos to those things because it's so much to cover in short amount of time. I just wanted to kind of do the highlight. So here we see the freelancer landing at the base, which kind of leads us. We're going to take a look at the dynamic missions uh, part of this which is my number two highlight from the, the Gamescom presentation. You'll see initially what will pop up is you'll see your normal hollow viewer and you'll see a video message, right? And I think this is something that's going to give the developers a lot of creative freedom to make engaging missions, right? Because they have all these character models done and the wireframes done and the ability to animate the, the you know, the mouth and, and things like that. I'm guessing they're going to have it on a more automatic basis, but how easy is it going to be now that they have the system in place to have these missions generated very simply, right? They're, they don't have to reinvent the wheel every time they want to send out a video message. And it takes it a little step further than the typical MMO quest where you see, hey, here's the line of text. Do you accept this mission or do you not? You can have these characters and essentially create these videos based off these characters in a more procedurally easy way. I don't want to call it easy, but in a way that you're able to create a ton of missions without a ton of manpower or without the type of manpower that you have to go and individually animate each individual. Standpoint, the dynamic missions that's also going to come along, another aspect that's going to come along with 3.0 is the five different roles. So roles within or professions within Star Citizen and specifically trading, cargo, being a pirate, bounty hunter, or a mercenary. All of these things are going to tie in to the new cargo system and mission loops within 3.0. So for example, if you wanted to trade, you can work the, the trading system, buy high or buy low, sell high, but then how are you going to transfer that? Are you going to have to hire someone to, uh, to, to move the cargo for you? Are you going to move it yourself? Are you going to need to hire, you know, a mercenary to help escort you from location to location? So a pirate doesn't steer your cargo or a bounty hunter doesn't come hunt you down. So there's just a lot of different, you know, possibilities, which leads us to our number three. The number three thing I was most excited about was the was the planet side vehicles, in particular, the reveal of the Dragonfly in action. So about a month or so ago, the Dragonfly, which is Star Citizen's space bike, or first space bike, was revealed on a concept sale. This is the first chance we had a chance to see it in flight and see it in action, not only in space, but from a planetary landing uh, standpoint and a comp planetary combat standpoint and there's just something about that moment when you saw and there's some context behind the mission which I would str strongly encourage you guys to go back the entire stream if you're a Star Citizen fan but uh, anyways one of the moments was where the you know you just saw the space bike was revealed for the cargo hatch in, in the opening of the cargo it's just another one of those moments but as we had a chance to see here you know this was the first moment we had to see the uh, really the dragonfly in action in the persistent universe or in, in their controlled tech demo persistent universe and having it being transported in the freelancer down to planet side possibilities i don't want to call them endless but there's just so many different aspects of this game that people are going to be able to enjoy whether you want to ride your your space bike almost like a, a land speeder in star wars across the surface of planets and either you know haul something or track people down at the beginning of the gamescom stream it was so interesting to see how far this game has come and then after the gamescom stream it's like wow this this game is really you know making a lot of headway and it gets a lot of criticism because it's taken so long to uh to be developed but you know this has never been done before essentially you know a way i like to describe it to people is it's like grand theft auto in space and how long does a grand theft auto game you know take to be made and, and you know but this is just a lot more involved than that but so you get a look at some some planet side uh flight and combat and then also the, a view of a, a new rover you know so they, they've released uh another concept on on this military style rover which is cool you, you if you're not into spaceships you want to spend more time planet side you can do that all right so here you get a chance to see the item 2.0 system in play so this is was towards the tail end of the dynamic mission or at least the scripted mission where now uh, there's going to be different options to interact with different items i believe chris robert called it like grabby hands so you can pick up you know items and move them around and you know, it's not just like, so in, and this is nothing against Elite Dangerous, but like in Elite Dangerous, if you want cargo, hey, you click a button and there you got your cargo. And this, the, the possibilities of having to move cargo, borrow cargo, steal cargo, you know, transport cargo, it makes different things within the game 
a lot more engaging. You know, say for example, you and some of your crew need to transport something and, and you now got to worry about and plan out how you get, maybe there's something illegal in this box, how you get it from point A to point B. After the Gamescom presentation, there was so much hype. The stream had over 45,000 viewers at one point. And I think this is the next step for a lot of people to get excited about the game. People that already that don't already know about the game, you know, I think someone watches a few minutes of this tech demo and they're chomping at the bit for it. Overall, you know, in terms of a presentation, a live presentation with all these things that could have gone wrong, the tech demo went really, really smooth. And I think that was, you know, one of the things you can expect with a Gamescom or a, a CIG presentation, it's real. You know, there's going to be some bumps and bruises along the way, and I think this is the first one we've seen where, you know, the only glitch we saw was the, the dragonfly disappear for half a second, the freelancer. You know, when you take, take a step back and you look at everything, you know, CIG has been hard at work at this game, and they kept a lot under wraps. And it's an exciting time to be a Star Citizen fan. I hope you guys enjoyed this opinion piece on the Star Citizen Gamescom presentation and the top three things I'm most excited about uh, coming in the future days for Star Citizen. If you guys enjoyed this video, clicking the like button helps out a great deal. And uh, throughout the rest of the week, I'm going to be focusing on some other Star Citizen opinion videos, in particular on 2.6, Star Marine, on the upcoming changes to Arena Commander. There's just so much to cover. I'm excited to share and share it with you guys and get your guys' opinions and, and always have a conversation in the comments below. And also, if you guys are new to the channel, I post a new Star Citizen gameplay video every morning at 9 a.m. Eastern. So if you guys want to see more Star Citizen videos in the future, subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.